Okay, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over uh, homework 3.3, so sine and cosine function values. The goal of this homework is to essentially derive the unit circle um, and then work with this equation uh, that P is equal to any, any point on the unit circle is equal uh, to R cosine theta, R sine theta. So these are the X and Y coordinates. We're going to talk about that more and then also uh, find the exact values of cosine and sine for angles that are multiples of pi over 4 and pi over 6 radians. Um, so, let's look at that. Uh, first, let's figure out how we get the values on the unit circle. And for reference, the unit circle is uh, this circle here with all of these coordinates, uh, where this circle is of radius 1, so these points right here are 1, 0, uh, 0, 1, and then down here we would have negative, sorry, uh, 0, comma, negative 1, and then over here we would have negative 1, comma, 0. But how do we figure out these other points that are on the circle? And we figure that out using uh, a little bit of geometry that we learned, um, well, for some of you last year uh, in geometry. And so, let's look at that. So here we have uh, an isosceles right triangle. Um, so isosceles meaning that two of the sides are the same length, so as we see here. And it being a right triangle is that it has um, a right angle in there. And now this is the only possible way to draw an isosceles right triangle. Um, you can't draw it in any other way. That right angle has to be in between the two, uh, the two, you know, the two same length sides. Um, but the goal of part A is that we want to label all angles on all side lengths of this triangle. Now we re we may remember this triangle as being called a 45, 45. 90 triangle from geometry and that's perfectly fine to continue to refer to it as such but since we're going to do all of our angles in um, in radians now uh, 45 degrees well we have to remember that pi radians is equal to 180 degrees so for example like the 90 degree angle here notice that if we divide both sides of this equation by 2 that tells us that pi over 2 radians is equal to 90 degrees. And we can even do that uh, if we have pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. Um, notice if we were to divide both of these values by 4, this would tell us that pi divided by 4 is equal to 45 degrees. So this angle right here is pi over 4, and this angle right here is pi over 4. Now what about the other side lengths? Um, well, we're given that this is, uh, we're, we're going to keep this all in terms of s, but since this, is, this side length is s, and this one is uh, equal to that length, we would say that this is also of side length s. And then if you don't remember the sides of the 45, 45, 90 triangle, um, you can always use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the length of the hypotenuse. So what we can do is s squared plus s squared is equal, and I'm going to call this r, I don't know what it is yet, but is equal to r squared. And so uh, we can combine like terms here on the left hand side, we get s 2s squared is equal to r squared. So then we can do, because uh, we're trying to get r by itself, we can take the square root of both sides, and that gives us that the square root of the left-hand side is square root of 2 s squared. Uh, then we have r, and so if we simplify the left-hand side, that tells us that r is equal to s square root of 2. And so we can replace that r with s squared of 2. And so that means that uh, if you have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, 
that all you need to do to get from one of the leg lengths to get the hypotenuse is multiply that length by the square root of 2. And now, if we look at part B, we have this similar triangle. It's the same thing, except now we're going to say that the uh, radius is equal to 1, or this hypotenuse is equal to 1. Uh, in order for us to scale this triangle to this triangle, we have to divide all of our sides by s square root of 2. Because if we do s square root of 2 divided by s square root of 2, that will give us 1. So that means we have to divide all of these side lengths by s square root of 2. So this side length, if I have s square root of 2, uh, well, s divided by s square root of 2 for this side and this side by extension, uh, this is going to be equal, now the s's are going to cancel, to 1 over square root of 2. Now I did ask for us to rationalize all the denominators. The reason we want to do this is because we're actually not going to see 1 over square root of 2 uh, in practice. So if we rationalize the denominator, we have square root of 2 over square root of 2, and then what that gives us, and I'm going to write that actually below this so it doesn't become cramped, 1 square root of 2, which is the square root of 2, and on the bottom we're going to have square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which is just 2. So that tells us that this side length here is the square root of 2 over 2, and since these two side lengths are the same, we have the square root of 2 over 2. And of course we still have these angles, we have pi over 4 here, and we have pi over 4 here. So, now that we know that, we're going to switch gears for a second for part C. We want to rearrange cosine of theta equals x over r and sine of theta equals y over r. So, why do we have these definitions? Um, if we remember back to geometry, uh, and we should have learned about the trigonometric ratios, um, if we have a triangle, we have some angle in question, um, the opposite side of this angle, which is so opposite of the angle, was here. The side next to it, remember this is a right triangle, the side next to the angle, but that's not the hypotenuse, was called the adjacent side. And then the hypotenuse, the one that's always across from the right angle, well, that was the hypotenuse. And we defined these trigonometric ratios, sine of theta was equal to opposite over hypotenuse, and cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So now that we're going to do all of this on the coordinate plane, and I'll bring that down here for a second, we can see that now this point right here, this is the origin. So this is the point 0, comma 0. Since we're doing all of this now on the coordinate plane, or the x-y plane, um, what we have to do, or I guess what's more convenient for us to do, is now instead of having a triangle where we call it opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse, it's going to be more convenient for us to label this instead as x, y, and r. And so that changes our definitions of sine and cosine. Um, instead, we get that sine of theta is now opposite, which is now y, over the hypotenuse, which is now r. Similarly for cosine, we get that the adjacent is x, and now the hypotenuse again is r. So that's where we get these definitions from here. But now we can rearrange them for x and y. So if I take cosine of theta is equal to x over r, and I wanted to get x by itself, I can multiply both sides of this by r. These r's are going to cancel, and that tells us that x is equal to r times cosine of theta. Similarly, if I have that sine theta is equal to y over r, 
and multiply both sides by r, these cancel, and we get that y is equal to r times sine of theta. And we can combine these answers into an xy coordinate, and we can say that x is equal to r cosine of theta, and we can say that y is r sine of theta. And so, that tells us that any xy coordinate um, along a circle uh, centered at the origin of any radius is going to be given by r cosine of theta. Whatever this angle is, r cosine of theta comma r sine of theta. So, now we want to use the information that we've derived from parts b and c here to figure out the coordinates of this point P right here. So notice first that this triangle is of radius 1, or has a hypotenuse of 1. And coincidentally on the unit circle, we have a radius of 1 on this circle. So if it helps, we can write 1 for the radius. And so if this is the same circle, or sorry, the same triangle, I'm going to move this point over here. But if this is the same triangle, that means that this bottom length here is the square root of 2 over 2. And this uh, length on the right, the other leg, is also the square root of 2 over 2. And so um, we can figure out that, well, the displacement, uh, the horizontal displacement of this point, since this is the origin, this distance right here has to be square root of 2 over 2. So that tells us our x-coordinate. And similarly, our y-coordinate is determined by the, the vertical displacement from the origin, which is also the square root of 2 over 2. And so there's a very uh, nice observation, or something that we can deduce from this about sine and cosine of these angles, is that well, we were told that the x-coordinate is equal to r times cosine of theta. And so if we, piece, if we piece all of this information together, the x-coordinate, square root of 2 over 2, is equal to the radius, which is 1, times cosine of whatever this angle is. And if we remember, this angle is pi over 4. So say pi over 4. So square root of 2 over 2 equals 1 times cosine of pi over 4, which means that if you know, we really don't need that 1 there, cosine of pi over 4 is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. Similarly, we can show that y is equal to r times sine of theta. And the y-coordinate here, square root of 2 over 2, is equal to the radius of this circle, which is 1, times sine of pi over 4. So we can also deduce that sine of pi over 4 has to be equal to the square root of 2 over 2. So we're going to hold on to these for later. That's why I'm going to box them. But this is the important um, derivation that we were trying to get to from this front page. So we started from first principles, just the geometry of a 45-45-90 triangle. And how do we conclude that these two statements or these two equations are true? and it's by the work that we did here. So now that we've done that, let's look at the next page. We're now going to work with an equilateral triangle, the goal of which is to get these two points here on the unit circle, which you know, is going to correspond to the coordinates here. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in this coordinate here that we have on the unit circle. So 
and you see that we have three points here, three points there, and the one in the middle is going to be the square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. Now we just want to figure out what these two are, and that's where we're going to use an equilateral triangle. So, we start with an equilateral triangle, which has all three of its side lengths um, equal to one another. For convenience, I'm going to call it 2 west um, for, for each side length. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut this triangle in half into two separate triangles. Also noted is that all of the angles of an equilateral triangle are equal to one another. So um, we know that the if, you, if we don't know what the dimensions of an equilateral triangle are, we do know that we have three of them, and if they're all equal to one another, theta, and if we, sh we should know that the sum of the interior angles of an equilateral, of any triangle, is 180 degrees. So, if we have three of the same angles is equal to 180 degrees, then dividing by three on both sides of this tells us that these angles have to be 60 degrees each. And now, if we wanted to convert this into radians, then if we know that pi is equal to 180 degrees, notice that we divided by 3 to get 60, so divided by 3, divided by 3, that tells us that pi over 3 is equal to 60 degrees. So each of these angles is pi over 3. So that's the dimensions of our equilateral triangle. We know that this is going to be 2s, that's going to be 2s. But what we're really interested in doing is splitting this into two separate triangles and then only using one half of it. So we're basically going to disregard that triangle. And now that we're working with this triangle here, um, since this length on the bottom got split perfectly in half, this new length here since the whole length was 2s, this new length on the bottom is only, only going to be 1s. But how do we figure out what this length is here on the side? And that's where we can again use the Pythagorean Theorem, or if you remember the dimensions of um, a 30-60-90 triangle from geometry, then you can do that as well. However, if we don't know what this is, I'm just going to call this uh, the y length, uh, because that's going to correspond to the y coordinate. And what we can get for this is that y squared, from again the Pythagorean theorem, y squared plus s squared is equal to 2s squared. So 2s squared We square 2 and then we square s. That's going to give us 4s squared like that. Uh, we can combine like terms by subtracting s squared from both sides. That gives us that y squared is equal to 3s squared. And then we can take the square root of both sides. And then that tells us that y is equal to the square root of 3s squared, which we can write as s square root of 3. So this side length here is s square root of 3. So now similar to the last page we're going to start with the same triangle but we're going to let the radius or the hypotenuse here be 1. In order for us to make this 1 from here we have to divide everything by 2s, because 2s divided by 2s is just going to be 1. And so if we take this length, divided by 2s, we take this length, divided by 2s, 2s over 2s is 1, s over 2s, the s's are going to cancel, so just to be explicit about that, s over 2s is going to be 1 over 2. And lastly, we have s square root of 3 divided by 2s, which is going to give us this length. 
the s's will cancel and this gives us the square root of 3 divided by 2. So this is now um, a 30-60-90 triangle but with a hypotenuse of 1 and the angles here we have the pi over 3 angle that stayed the same we now have a 90 degree angle because we bisected this and now this angle up here remember it was um, it was pi over 3 when we started with an equilateral triangle because it was the same as this angle but because we bisected it we cut it in half this now gets cut in half too so if we take pi over 6 and then divide that by 2 that's going to be equal, sorry, pi over 3, getting ahead of myself, pi over 3, that's what that started with, divided by 2, that's going to be pi over 6. Or, if you think about this in terms of degrees, we started off with a 60 degree angle, and if we divide it by 2 by cutting it in half, this is a 30 degree angle now, which is pi over 6. So, this angle here now is pi divided by 6. So how can we use that to figure out the coordinates of these two points? Well, this triangle right here is already oriented like that. And this one is just uh, flipped around a little bit so that the pi over 6 angle is now over here. But let's work with this one first because this is already oriented uh, in the way that we see over here. So just like before this radius is still 1 and we can see that from the unit circle because this point over here on the x-axis is 1 comma 0. But since this is 1 this is now 1 half right here and this length is square root of 3 over 2. And as mentioned before, since this point right here is the origin, then this point, the x coordinate, has to be whatever this value is here on the bottom, which is 1 half. The point over here has to be the y coordinate, so the vertical displacement from the x axis, so square root of 3 over 2. So, if we look now at this uh, coordinate, so that corresponds, take this in view, so this point right here corresponds to this point right here, so this is 1 half and the y coordinate square root of 3 over 2. Now what about the other triangle? This is the same triangle but now these two coordinates are flipped. This the long side now is square root of 3 over 2 and the short side is 1 half. And so the x coordinate now is a horizontal displacement from the origin so square root of 3 over 2 and now this is the y coordinate 1 half and so this tells us that this coordinate right here is also going to be square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. We also get some really uh, useful information out of this because remember that the x coordinate is equal to r times cosine theta. Well, this angle right here is pi over 3. So the x coordinate 1 half is equal to 1 times cosine of theta which is pi over 3. So the 1 doesn't really matter. The information we get out of that is that cosine of pi over 3 is equal to 1 half. 
Similarly, we get that y is equal to r times sine of theta. And the y-coordinate over here is just that the square root of 3 over 2 is equal to 1 times sine of this angle, pi over 3. And so that tells us, I'm going to box this one real quick. The other piece of important information is that sine of pi over 3 is equal to square root of 3 over 2. Over here, notice that now with the small angle here, pi over 6, or the small angle in a 30, 60, 90 is pi over 6 or 30 degrees. So we have pi over 6 as our new angle, but now the coordinates have just switched. So similar to this over here, we get that cosine of pi over 6 is equal to the x-coordinate here, square root of 3 over 2. We also get that sine of pi over 6 is equal to the uh, y-coordinate here, which is 1 half. So, with all of that information, we can now figure out these three pairs of angles. So, if we look at the previous page that we were working on, that's why I boxed this, we can that cosine of pi over 4 and sine of pi over 4 are both square root of 2 over 2. So both of those are square root of 2 over 2. Over here, we get that pi, uh, sorry, cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. And we get that sine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. Over here, they're switched. Cosine of pi over 6 is the square root of 3 over 2. And the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. The last observation to make is over cosine of 0 and pi over 2. So what does a 0 degree angle look like? Now we should remember that 0 degrees, well, that any angle in a standard position starts off on the positive x-axis. And then we trace out whatever angle we have. So if we were doing like an angle like that, uh, we would start from here and then go to whatever that angle is, and that would tell us what theta is. But if we're only doing zero radians, um, just like on a on a number line, um, if you start at zero and end at zero, we're starting. Uh, in a standard position, and then we don't add any any uh, angle measurement, positive or negative. So our ending angle is still right there. That is zero degrees, or zero radians. So this point right here on the positive x-axis is for zero radians, or zero degrees. And so, similar to how we've looked at and derived these coordinates, cosine of zero radians is going to be the x-coordinate here. So cosine of zero is equal to one. And sine of zero is going to be the y-coordinate, which is zero. The last two that we have over here, cosine of pi over two and sine of pi over two, Pi over 2, well, pi is equal to 180 degrees, divided by 2, divided by 2. That tells us that pi over 2 is 90 degrees. So we should recognize that pi over 2 is this coordinate up here. Same coordinate over here, but the coordinate over here is 
positive, or sorry, zero and then positive one because it's on the y-axis. And so cosine of pi over two is going to be equal to the x-coordinate, which is zero. And sine of pi over two is going to be equal to the y-coordinate, which is one. So these values are going to be incredibly important for us to memorize. Um, we will continue to use these. I mean, it, 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 would, it should be something that we know like our multiplication facts. Um, and we will definitely work with memorizing these. Uh, so I don't expect you to memorize them quite yet, but um, with the AP exam in about seven weeks, we need to start working on that and make sure that we know all of these plus several others. But now we can use that information to fill in the fir uh, first quadrant of the unit circle. So now, um, by, uh, by symmetry, we can figure out the other coordinates on the unit circle. So for example, we see that if we know that this is the origin right here, this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis, this point right here corresponds to this point over here. They have the same vertical displacement. They're both translated the same distance vertically from the x-axis. The only difference is that this one goes in the positive direction for the x-values. This one goes in the negative direction. All we need to do is flip the x-coordinate to get this point. And the same thing will happen for this point over here. And the same thing will happen for this point over here. All of these points have the same y-coordinates as each other. The x-coordinates are just mirrored on the other side. So this one becomes negative one-half square root of three over two. This one becomes negative square root of two over two. And the y-coordinate is still square root of two over two. And this one becomes negative square root of three over two, positive one half. So same coordinates, same numbers, just all the x coordinates are flipped. Now what about these coordinates down here? So by symmetry, all of these correspond to one another. The only difference is now they have the same x coordinates, but the y coordinates are negated because it's below the y axis or below the x axis now. So this point right here becomes negative square root of three over two, negative one half. This point becomes negative square root of two over two, negative square root of two over two, and then negative one half, negative square root of three over two. And lastly, for this quadrant over here, these points correspond to one another. But now, since we're flipping back over onto the uh, positive x-axis, we have to flip the x-coordinates again. This is now going to be negative square root of 3 over 2 comma, uh, sorry, positive square root of 3 over 2. And then still negative 1 half because we're still below the x-axis here. And then we have square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2. And then we have positive 1 half, negative square root of 3 over 2. 
The other way that we could have done that is notice that this point corresponds to this one. So uh, since it's 1 half square root of 3 over 2, and if we go below the x-axis, so we could negate the y-coordinate here, we end up with that. Let me make that a little bit clear. That is a negative. Same thing here. Negate the y-coordinate. And we get negative square root of 2 over 2. And then negate the y-coordinate. X-coordinates are all positive still, but negative 1 half instead for the y-coordinate. So, that's how we can figure out all the coordinates of the unit circle. Now, what angles do we have here? So, something we, um, and I'm going to use a different color here, use blue. We've already de decided, or we've figured out when we were doing angles uh, last week that this is a zero degree angle or zero radians. In fact, I'm going to talk about all of these in radians going forward. This was an angle of pi over 2. This was an angle of pi. And we can think of, if we're going in quarter rotations, 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, so pi, 3 pi over 2, and we're back to 4 pi over 2, or 2 pi. So both of those are equivalent. Now what if we're doing quarter, or sorry, uh, I guess an eighth of a rotation? This would be pi over 4. Then we have 2 pi over 4, which 2 pi over 4 is going to be pi over 2 again. This one is going to be 3 pi over 4. 4 pi over 4, so just pi. 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 6 over 4 is going to be 3 over 2, and then 7 pi over 4. Let me make that a little bit closer. Uh, yeah, let me put that right here. 7 pi over 4. Okay, and now this angle right here was pi over 6. So if we have pi over 6, this is 2 pi over 6. 2 pi over 6 is pi over 3. 3 pi over 6, sorry, yeah, 3 pi over 6, so 3 over 6 is just 1 half. 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, this is going to be 7 pi over 6, Eight pi over six. So let me write that down here. Eight pi over six is going to be four pi over three. So four pi over three. Um, let's see, uh, so that was. 7, 8, 9 pi over 3, sorry, pi over 6, 9 over, so let me write that out, 9 pi over 6, divide by 3 on both sides, it gives us 3 pi over 2, so we still have that, so that was 9 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6, which oops, that simplifies as 5 pi over 3, and then 11 pi over 6 here. And then 12 pi over 6 is again 2 pi. So, all of this information, um, they can tell us basically the sine and cosine of any angle on the unit circle is equal to these values. Um, something to observe about all of the angles is that 
all of the pi over 6s are closest to the x-axis. So pi over 6 angles are closest to the x-axis. So I'll highlight those in blue. All of the pi over 4 angles are in the middle. And it looks like my pen died. Okay. Green. So pi over 4 angles are in the middle between uh, the pi over 6's. Uh, oh, I wrote five, 4 pi over 6 over there. It does simplify to uh, 2 pi over 3. And then all of the pi over 3's, I'll just not highlight them so that it doesn't become too cluttered. But pi over 3, you know, multiple pi over 3, 3, 3, 3, are closest to the y-axis. So, uh, something to note there. And again, how we can read this, or interpret this, is like, what if I wanted to know cosine of 7 pi over 6? All I would have to do is look at the x-coordinate. And that gives us that it's equal to negative square root of 3 over 2. What if I wanted a uh, sine of 5 pi over 3? I look at the y-coordinate and I get negative square root of 3 over 2. And any, any coordinate on here because the radius for all of these is 1, because we're on the unit circle, any xy coordinate on here will be given by cosine of theta, sine of theta. And so, as long as you know what the angle is, and if you're just interested in the x or y coordinate, so if you're interested in cosine, look at the x coordinate. If you're interested in sine, look at the y coordinate. And that's how we get the unit circle from first principles. So we started with knowing some geometry about 45, 45, 90 triangles. And we can figure out if we were to put this on an xy plane, where how we can interpret those as xy coordinates. And then we did the same thing for equilateral triangles, split it up into a 30, 60, 90 triangle figure out what those coordinates are. We can get some useful information out of that. And then, once we know all of these, these correspond to all of the important angles and measurements for the first quadrant of the unit circle, then using symmetry we can figure out quadrants 2, 3, and 4. And then by just uh, multiplying our angles by some multiple, so the pi over 4s, uh, so pi over 4, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 pi over 4, and then pi over 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I missed one, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, there we go, so 12 pi over 6, which is 2 pi. That's how we get all of these measurements on the unit circle. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to memorize all of these. I'm going to help you do that. Don't panic. I already have that planned out, how we're going to do that. Um, however, the goal is that you have all of these memorized just like your multiplication tables. And I should be able to ask you, hey, what is... Again, cosine of 7 pi over 6, and you should be able to say, hopefully within a few seconds, that's negative square root of 3 over 2. If I ask you what sine of 5 pi over 3 is, you should hopefully be able to say, that's also negative square root of 3 over 2, or anything else like that. So, um, yeah. But that is the unit circle, and I will make a second video for 
these. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.